The ancient Hebrew scriptures foretold of the Anointed One, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His Word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men, teaching the Route 66 Kings Highway from Genesis through to Revelation. Three brief overview sections in relation to this particular parash reading. Section 1, the Torah. Section 2, how this parash fits in the New Testament. Section 3, for our future and the end of days and our Messiah's return. Shalom, Mishpoka. Welcome, my family, to another edition of The Remnant's Call. This parasha that we're going to be looking at is Tizriah and Metzorah. This is from Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1 through chapter 15, verse 33. It's two, par two parashas that we're looking at today. But we're only going to look at portions of, of this parasha in this mini teaching. This, um, what we're going to look at, this parasha talks about the babies, when we have babies. What we're to do with those babies, how long the mother is to be secluded, and the reasons that God has for doing that. We look at Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1 through 5, and in those verses we see on the eighth day that a male child of the covenant is to be circumcised on the eighth day. We then go on to read that if it is a boy that is being born, he is to be with his mother um, through her days of nada and plus 33 days. 33 days. Okay? But if it's a girl, that the baby girl should be with her mother for 80 days without going out into public. Well, this is very interesting. Why would God do such a thing? Well, the first part we look at is on the eighth day. Okay, the eighth day to have the child circumcised. This is a covenant that was given to Avraham. Okay, and it went throughout our generations. But why the eighth day? How would they have known the eighth day? Well, it's so amazing because God, when a baby is born on the eighth day, there is a clotting factor that, is, that goes into the blood by the, the way God has designed us. And actually, the baby barely bleeds if it is done on the eighth day. So when the circumcision happens, so that nothing happens to the baby, he won't bleed to death. The Lord did it on the eighth day. And it's so very fascinating. When you look at studies today, men who are circumcised have less incidences of colon cancer, urinary tract infections, and sexually transmitted diseases if they are circumcised. Well, God said, this is my covenant. Now, the other part about having a baby and being secluded for those days is another wonderful health issue by our Lord. Our Lord wanted us to be secluded. Why? So that the mother and baby could bond, but that the baby could breastfeed and build up its immune system. And in that 80 days, those that have been breastfed, especially the girls, for the 80 days without going out will get less cold and then be less apt to get sick and die. It is very interesting that God would do those things. But you know what? God is amazing. And that's why he tells us this in his Torah. Now, the other part about this is the woman with the discharge of blood that we need to understand because that will also be fulfilled in the New Testament. Okay, the woman with the issue of blood could not go out because blood has viruses in it. Blood has things that we don't want with other people and it could be very messy. And this is why a woman with the issue of blood would never go out in public because if she touched other people, she would make them unclean because she herself is unclean. Now, we look to the part two here of this teaching. In the fulfillment, Luke chapter 2, verse 22 and 23, speaks about Miriam, 
You might know her as Mary. Her name was Miriam because she's Jewish, and Jewish people don't name their kids Mary. Miriam, just like Moses' sister, was named Miriam. Okay, She waited the days of her purification to come to the temple. Okay, Her days of purification by God's law, so that Yeshua the Messiah, the baby, would not have gotten sick. Now the other part about that we look at today is that issue of blood. The issue of blood, okay? Remember, Yeshua was walking through the crowd in Luke chapter 8, verse 41 through 47. He's walking through a crowd, and then the woman with the issue of blood of 12 years reaches out and grabs this, and she's healed. So here it is that God's law, if you follow God's law properly, you will be healed because this end of the garment, the seat siot, the end that the woman grabbed, the kanoff, the edge of his garment, every Jewish man would have been wearing this. She reached out and touched it because God wanted to heal this woman because there's eight fringes on the end of this garment and then eight times four is 32. 32 in Hebrew is lev. It is our heart. God's heart wanted to heal this woman. Eight is the number for new beginnings. So here it is, the issue of blood that the woman reached out to Yeshua the Messiah and was healed. Now, we go to section three about this fulfillment of things yet to come. And we look at Revelation chapter seven, verse 14. These are the people that have come out of the great persecution of having their blood spilled, okay? Blood, blood, blood. 144,000 virgin Jewish men that are found in Revelation seven. And they get this new life, this new robe because they get up in heaven with the Lord. So here it is, the tie together of this particular parasha is from the issue of being born, the circumcision of man, the health issues that come with that, the healthy babies that do get saved because they nurse properly for the proper amount of time, the circumcision which keeps men from getting cancer, and urinary tract infections, and then the issue of the woman with the blood to revelation of those who are saved by the blood of the Lamb.